This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by a former featherweight world champion, Heather Hardy. Heather, how are you? Hi there. Doing well and yourself? I'm very good. Thank you. We're keen to welcome you to the UK. Now, I should point out before we carry on, and I want to say this on camera, your fight hasn't been announced yet, and this video won't go out until it has been announced. So if I in any way break that promise, everyone who watches this video will know that I'm a charlatan, which I'm not. <laughs> But you're going to be coming over here to fight Terry Harper, I believe, on March the 12th. How did that all come about? Um, my promoter called me and asked me, did I want to do it? And I said, yeah. <laughs> it's usually pretty cool when it works out that way. It, uh, she, someone that was on your radar, obviously she's just moving up from uh, super feather to lightweight, but you were previously at the lower weights. Was she on your radar previously? I don't really have a radar. <laughs> I mean, you know, I lost my world title back in 2019 and uh, then the country shut down. The world shut down because of the pandemic. So I haven't really had a radar. Um, you know, I came back for a fight last year back in May off of a very, very long time away from boxing and wasn't in a great spot mentally. So I'm actually excited to to be given this another run and grateful for a chance. How difficult has it been for you? I know female fighters have probably suffered disproportionately during the pandemic, but for you personally, I know you're a mum as well. How hard has it been? Uh, it's been really challenging. I mean, it's hard enough being a single parent, but to try to do it with half of the world shut down makes it even harder. I mean, boxing was out of the question for me coming off a loss and, uh, you know, getting up there in age, I didn't, I couldn't really afford to just, you know, take off of my full-time job and just train. So I was out of the gym for over a year, not being able to even train because I had to make money to support my family. And what, what, were you, what is your um, day job, if you like? Um, I'm a boxing coach and a personal trainer. So I run around with my little pads <laughs> And I, I teach boxing all over Brooklyn. That must have been especially tough for you because not only can you not train for your own career, but you're around everyone who is training. So it's kind of here's what you can't have. Yeah. I mean, anybody who is a personal trainer will tell you that it's very hard to do both. It's hard to find the motivation to be in the gym all day teaching people and then on the one or two small breaks you have to go and work out, especially when you don't have a fight contract. That's very hard. <laughs> And you came back, as you said, um, against Jessica Kamara up at lightweight and she went on to give Kaylee Reese a really tough fight, a weight up from that. Was that just because you were desperate to get back out there? Because you, you should have no business up at lightweight, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, I was desperate to get back out there, but I also got fat. <laughs> I got <laughs> fat during the, the lockdown because all I did was drink wine and eat pizza, and, and I, I didn't have much motivation to work out. I had put on so much weight, and I said I was going to come back at lightweight and then try to make my way down, but I'm also getting up there in age, so I don't know that I'd physically be able to hit 126 again, even if you paid me <laughs> six <laughs> figures to do it. It would be really hard. <laughs> If anyone wants to pay Heather six figures to do it, <laughs> let, let us know. Well, but I'll, I'll cut something off and I'll get there on that scale. <laughs> so Terry Harper, what, what do you make of her? She's obviously a former world champion at, at Super Feather. Not a great result for her last time out. And let's be honest, you're being brought over as the opponent. Um, te she's testing the waters in a new weight class. What do you make of her? Um, she could fight, you know, she could fight. She said that, and our camp had said that the reason why she was so um, didn't do such a great job is because she didn't belong at lightweight uh, at Super Feather, is it? Mm -hmm. And I can I can relate to that. You know, when when I was offered my world title shot at 126, I was ready to move up to 130, and I couldn't because I was being challenged. I was being offered this great opportunity. I mean, those cuts to 126 were like. You know, some I remember some some fight camps where my my girlfriends would have to come sit in the steam room with me the night before and literally carry me home because I could barely walk. So I really relate to 
to that idea that she just couldn't make 130 anymore and it just took too much out of her. So I, I don't I don't think for one second that she's gonna come back and be super strong at 135. And from from a skill set perspective, what, what do you make of her? She didn't have a long amateur background, but has done very well as a pro. I didn't have a long amateur background either. I only had about 25 or 30 fights. I stayed in the amateurs for about 18 months before I turned pro. I mean, so that doesn't always mean anything. And and because I have so much experience, I am a veteran, you know, I know better than to look at someone on TV and say what I think, because what you see and what you get are two different things in boxing. And people say that about me all the time. I don't look like that much, but I am a pain in the ass in that ring. So, so I've learned over the years that going, you know, going back and forth to sports, so much exposure with being across the ring or across the cage from someone, I ain't expecting nothing from them, only from me. There's been a lot of um, conjecture in the UK over the last couple of years about the officiating, particularly the judging um, over here, I'm sad to say. Is that something that enters into your mind? and Does it add any extra pressure to end the fight inside the distance? Well, the, the judging in America ain't so great either. I mean, when it comes to boxing... You know what I'm saying? When it comes to boxing, if you ain't the favorite, you ain't the favorite. And I spent a great many years of my career being the favorite, right? Like being in New York, having all my fans, you know, the judges, you know, everybody knows me here. And um, my last fight was kind of the first fight I ever felt like I wasn't the favorite. So, I mean, it's it's definitely a shift. But, you know, one lesson I learned in my last fight was... um. You can't go in thinking about judging and scoring. You got to go in super focused on doing your job right. You know, too often we we focus on I'm the favorite, I'm the A side, I'm the B side, and I got to do this so it look like this. Nah, you you, you got to just go in and beat up the girl. <laughs> and is that how you defeat Terry Harper? Beat her up? You know, do you have to outwork her rather than outbox her? I think that it's, you know, it's up to my coaches and this has been my whole career. It's up to my coaches to come up with a game plan. I just go in and do my training. You know, like I got a team of three amazing, amazing experienced coaches, Devon, Blimp and Kat. And these three guys talk to each other and say how they're going to train me. And I just go in and do the work so that when I'm in front of Terry, I have an answer for what she gave me. Good to hear. Now, you're a big name, of course, but there might be a few people out there that aren't aware of you and, and your backstory. Just tell us a little bit about that, how you grew up and um, how you got into boxing. Sure. I mean, I have an Irish-American background. My great, uh, my grandparents came from Ireland and Scotland and moved to Brooklyn, New York. And my whole family um, is, you know, I was born and raised here. My mom was born and raised here. And my whole family is still here. And, you know, I started boxing really late in life. I was 28, single mom, just like hustling, grinding, trying to make some money. I made a big name for myself here in New York City. And this can be my first time overseas. So I'm really psyched for all my fans in the UK and in Ireland to finally get to come see me fight. Is it your first time overseas to compete or your first time overseas, period? Ever. Ever. Wow. <laughs> I went, I went to Jamaica. That's as far as I've been. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something. Um, yeah. How, how much are you looking forward to that aspect of it? Obviously, you have to focus on the fight, but once the fight's done, are you going to stay for a little bit longer and sightsee? Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to be so close to Ireland because I'm thinking I really want to go spend our St. Patrick's Day in Ireland. So I might go back to the little town where my grandma was from and, you know, just sightsee and things like that. Which town is that? Uh, it's close to Dublin. Okay. Just for our, for our Irish viewers out there, I'm sure they'll, they'll know it. Um, yeah. You, you said you're a single mum, of course. How, how old is your, is it daughter? My daughter is 17. Oh, wow. So I'm assuming you're very proud of the, the young woman she's becoming. How tough has it been to balance your boxing with um, motherhood? It's, it's tough to balance everything with motherhood, <laughs> especially when you, you're by yourself. You know, it's tough to balance everything with motherhood because I'm responsible for everything when it comes to that little girl who is now almost a grown woman <laughs> who's going to college and leaving her mom in the next year. 
So the most important thing I can do is set a good example so that she sees how hard I work and what I work for and does the same. And she shows me every day. She does just that. And you're putting her through college. I mean, that's an achievement in itself. <sighs> yeah. Now I'll wipe out your savings in a hurry, but I'm sure it'll all be worth really <laughs> What does she think about what you do for, for a job, for, for your boxing specifically? She don't think she she don't she don't think nothing of it because it's all she knows, you know. It's it's easy to for outside and think, wow, your mom's a fighter, but to her, I'm just her mom. <laughs> I'm just like, you know, her dorky not cool embarrassing mom <laughs> why was it boxing for you you said you were 28 and you wanted to work out a way to make money but there's so many other things that, that are possibilities why boxing what attracted you uh because i found out that this is what i was good at and i um was 28 years old and living with my sister at the time when we were two single moms no child support i was working a bunch and my sister was staying home with the kids and she got me a gift certificate to a little karate dojo. And within three weeks of going, I had my first fight and I beat up this girl so bad. And I just felt like, wow, this is the first time I ever felt like I'm good at something. Like, like maybe I could do this. And it was the first time I was ever passionate about something that I just would wake up in the morning and want to spend as much time as I had to get better at it. So, you know, finding passion and Tying that to money, I just kind of ran after it. How do people react that don't know you as a boxer when they find out what you do for a living, particularly at, around the school or PTA meetings, you know, normal stuff? Um, it, it used to be like really people would be really surprised like, oh, wow, you know. But I think over the years I've developed like this um, between – being 39 and then being a world champion and being in two combat sports, you just have this kind of attitude that comes off you. Even when I'm laughing, people know better than to mess with me. So it just gets like worse. It's not really surprising that I could fight. <laughs> how, how I'm you, a little intimidating. Yeah, I get it. Um, even through the screen. How, how have you remained so kind of down to earth and grounded? Because, you know, like you say, you're, you're still the dorky kind of mum to your to your daughter, but you've achieved a hell of a lot and you're very well known, particularly in the States. I don't remain so down to earth. Maybe because I never made any money. <laughs> if I was rich, I bet I'd be an asshole. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't say that because promoters won't make you rich if they think that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you think that's the uh, the key to it, just uh, stay, staying relatively poor? No, I mean, it, it, I don't know what it is. I guess it's just it's your personality. I never, you never let, what do they say? Never let a win get to your head and a loss get to your heart. It's true. It's just life. How long before the fight on March 12th do you expect to come over to the UK? I think they said like five or six days or something. Like it's in the contract. I don't know. And are you, are you really looking forward to the whole, not just the fight itself, but the fight week events? Like you say, you've never been overseas before, so it's a pretty big deal. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while since I've done the whole media workout and press conference, and I love that. You know, I, I'm grateful for the chance to do that. One of the things of my last fight is I was training for my last fight, and I just was so unhappy. I was mad at boxing. I wasn't making good money. It was a small show. You know, I did I didn't love it and I was mad and I didn't love it. And um, part of my attitude for this fight is I don't have to do this. I get to do this. I get to do this. So I'm really happy and grateful and thankful that I get the chance to do all this. When will we see you switch from kind of really happy to be here, enjoying everything going on to fight mode? When, when does that happen in a fight week for you? It doesn't happen. I'm like this all the time because I love what I do. I love fighting. There's no, there's no switch. You know, when I'm in the gym, I'm focused as hell. And when I leave, I'm just like this. And that's just how it's going to be fight week. You're not going to see no difference. And the hardiest just who I am. When I'm in the ring, then I'm doing my job.
So what are we going to see in the ring, crucially? I guess we won't know. You know, it's, it's hard to call it. Uh, there are so many um, different aspects to good boxing. I, one thing I can tell you is you will see me be relentless to, to get towards that W. Great stuff. Well, just before I let you go, I know you're a huge star already, but just for people out there who aren't on the train just yet, tell everyone how they can find you on the different social media platforms. Sure. You can follow me on Instagram at Heather Hardy Box. Nope, that's a lie. You can follow me on Twitter at Heather Hardy Box. You can follow me on Instagram at Heather the Heat. And Facebook, you know how that works. You just put my name in. Good stuff. <laughs> we wish you the very best of luck uh, with the rest of your camp and look forward to seeing you during Fight Week. Thanks, Danny. All right. Take care. Thank you.